After that song, I hope you're enjoying Nita Visita as much as I'm enjoying putting these stories together about our people, our land, our culture, and a lot of other things. We have a very unusual story this evening on human courage, human endurance. You do not have to be on Guam too long to appreciate the land's tropical growth that fights back. You push back the jungle and it bounces right back at you to reclaim what you have taken. And then there is the ubiquitous Tangantangan that never gives up. During the occupation of Guam in World War II, many of our young men and boys in serious trouble with the occupation force took off to the jungle and did not emerge until after the war. But they knew the jungle, had clothing and equipment with them and spoke the language and were in periodic contact with their families. At the same time, an American sailor, Petty Officer George Tweed was also in hiding and although enemy patrols were searching for him, he was being relocated and fed by Japan by Chamorro patriots who were doing it not for the love of Tweed, but out of loyalty to the United States. For months after liberation, enemy soldiers in hiding either surrendered or were captured. Some took a few years to be found, but the last one was not captured for many, many more years. The last holdout did not speak the language of Guam. He was not acquainted with the jungle. He had no equipment other than his personal weapon and gear. And on top of that, everyone was his enemy, the people of Guam and the U.S. military. The wild jungle, the land of the Tautamona, was his only friend. We're now approaching the 25th anniversary of the remarkable day when two men from Talufolfo, Manuel de Garcia and Jesus Duenas, chased down and captured the last Japanese soldier in hiding. Sergeant Soichi Yokoi of the Japanese Imperial Army was an intensely loyal person to his emperor. He was willing to undergo incredible hardship and loneliness rather than surrender, which to him would have been a dishonorable thing to do. Yokoi did some truly remarkable things in the jungle. This is a depiction of the cave he built for himself seven feet below a bamboo patch. To minimize the smoke emerging from his cave, he devised a filter made of coconut husk that served that purpose as well as cut down the telling order of cooking. A principal part of his diet was fadang, from which a special kind of tortilla is made. Fadang, however, is well known for its toxic effect when it is not prepared properly, a process that is lengthy and laborious. But somehow, Sergeant Yukoi discovered that fadang was eatable and it was a staple for him throughout the years. Even more astonishing, he discovered that the bark of the Tronkunpago is made of very strong fibers. For centuries, our ancestors used this bark for making rope. Sergeant Yukoi went much further than that. From its thin fibers, he made a fabric, and from that fabric, he made his army uniform. Like the Holy Tang and Tongan, Sergeant Yukoi never gave up. For 28 years, he worked hard to survive in the jungles of Guam. He was very creative. Friends and foes alike admire this man for his courage and his endurance. And as a soldier myself, I salute this man for what he did. And it happened here on Guam. This is Ben Blas. See you next week.